All right, I'm just going to sort of point out a few things that I've recently learned about, you know, nose writing. And I want to start this video by saying I can't nose write. And I'll explain some of the reasons why I sort of can't. Now, my... I started surfing longboards when I was getting too heavy for short boards. They just weren't floating me enough and just too much hassle paddling and, you know, life's easier with more volume. So my short, my longboards were always high performance longboards and I always, you know, surfed them like they were short, short boards. And yeah, as a result, I had like a more of a radical sort of progressive style and I never surfed traditionally and when I say traditionally like you know walk up and down the board hang five hang ten all that sort of business I've done it like probably three times um and that would be uh hanging five to fall off and hanging ten to fall off so the reason why um Number one, I can't nose ride, but number two, the, the boards that I had were high performance long boards. They had lots of rocker, meaning they had lots of curve in them, and they're quite thin, not enough volume, f fairly narrow, and every time someone my weight, like 100 and you know something kilos, would walk to the nose, the board would just sink. Now, what I've learned in because the wave I ride is gutless, you know, it's this local wave around here and it's a long borders wave and yeah, you really need a nose rider out there and you can't beat them, join them. So I found this one second hand and I got it for 500 bucks, it was on for 7.95, reduced down to about 600. Um, negotiated 550 and luckily got it for 500 came with a sort of shitty fin and I just put one of my own in there that I had lying around and some of the things that I've learned number one if you want a nose rider it's got to be 9.6 plus unless you're an experienced nose rider and or you're very light you know just stick 9.6 to 10 foot but 10 foot, 9, 8, you're starting to have issues getting the thing in the car. Like I've got a wagon and this is sort of just getting in there. Probably put a 10 footer if I had to, but it'd, you know, it'd be a little bit of an effort. So this is 9, 6. So when you're looking for a longboard and you want a nose ride, go for 9, 6 minimum. It's very thick. So the thickness of the board this one's about like three and a quarter or something like that um it's very flat so not too much rocker and that's the curve throughout the board very mild okay if you have a look at the board more high performance boards are rounded pins and they have a lot of hold. This will have a lot more release, but it's gonna need to because it's got a big hatchet fin there. Beautiful color. Had an apartment in Freshwater and the handrail was this color. A little bit darker, but so beautiful. I wasn't expecting this because when I um, picked the board up, or when I saw it advertised, it looked yellow. I think he was trying to like do a bit of trick photography. Didn't think everyone would like this colour, but I absolutely love it. Now, it's made by CLS, Creative Laminating Solutions, uh, down at Port Kembla. They made awesome high performance long boards. I really enjoy um, one of their boards I've got. And yeah, it's a great board. I've ridden quite a few. Um, it's, uh, he's got a bit of, um, I don't know what the deal is with this colour, but yeah, his boards seem to be like, pretty colourful. Maybe that's the creative laminating 
part of the name, but anyway. You'll notice that this board's very wide, so it gives you lots of stability side to side. And one thing, I think it's, if you have a look at the rails too, they're very soft, very rounded. Forget the name of the, the effect. It's like the Coranda effect where the water goes over the rail and then it creates a form of suction. Hang on, I'll show you. Don't mind the washing. But what, what happens, this spoon will move, not away from it, but it gets sucked in, into it. See that? So imagine that curve. <laughs> this is the coriander effect, the coriander effect. <laughs> so watch this, right? Here's a spoon. And you think, oh yeah, the water will push that away. Watch what happens, right? So there I'm not forcing it in. Just, I'll turn it side on. And then I'll just touch it in the water. See that? It pulls it in. Like that's... Look at that, I'm moving the spoon around. Watch. Watch again, get it down here. See? Tucked it in. Oh, look. <laughs> That's it. Alright. So, getting back to the board. So what happens... You have the coriander effect, the coriander effect of, say, say this is the wave, right? That's the wave there. That's perfect, actually. So what happens when the board's going along, gets sucked in to the wave face like that, right? And if you look, there's one good video where you can see how water performs over the long board, right? So that's what's holding it in there. So the longer the board, the longer that rail, the more board you've got being sucked in to that wave, right? Then the wave is dragging the board up the wave, okay? Your weight on the board and direction of the board is turning that board down like that. Right, let's see if I can jam that up there. And then that's a pretty good representation of what the hell's happening when you're surfing, anyway. So, that's where those headpieces, those headpieces would wrap over the board, right? And usually, when you're nose riding, it's going to be happening from about here back, here back. But then, where this rail sharpens up, like, it's soft, 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 soft. Just starts to get an edge where he's put these side bites. You don't want to run side bites because it breaks up that rail, right? So the the, the coranda effect. So you want that coranda effect to be um, happening over the rail. And then where it stops happening is when you get this slight sharpness of rail. Now that slight sharpness of rail marries up perfectly with the beginning of this Rat hatchet fin, what are they called? Shit. That's a big beauty. So that's going to slow the board up a, a bit. Give it, you know, lots of width. A lot of water is going to wrap around there and just keep it steady, right? Then when you've got the square tail, that's where you've got the release. And that's, that's an edge there. So it's like it doesn't have that coranda effect but yeah that's one beautiful board that's going to get waxed up that's beautiful i'm going to take a photo of that so what you need just recapping when you're looking at a long boarding board that you want to nose ride with it's got to be at least nine six it's got to have a pretty flat rocker Right, and so that the curve in the board, you want it to be pretty flat. Some people will um, have that slight 
elevation in the tail, a little bit of rock or kick in the tail, so the water going off the back that's not affected by the not going over the rail of the board will hold the tail down so you can stand on the nose, but I don't think there's too much to that. I think it's mostly to do with the amount of rail and the softness of that rail that you've got in the, the water in the way for that coriander, coriander effect as you saw with the spoon. And yeah, it's um, got to be wide, thick, so plenty of volume. And what some of those riding boards have, like mine have it, I think it's just not completely sold on it. Whereas they have a concave here, which is to provide lift um, when you're nose riding. But, you know, where's the science on that? That's a beautiful board. The sun's done a little bit of blue graphics. <laughs> How long that'll last. But yeah, I'm going to give uh, longboarding a crack. And, um, yeah. See how we... See how we go.